Welcome everyone, this is Rob Sanders and today we're going to talk about Google Tag Manager. Thanks for joining and let's get started with this Simply Learn webinar. So let's start out with YGTM. So let's just say you're Sam and you have your own e-commerce website and you want to understand how people are interacting with your website. Well, Sam, today's world of websites contain a lot of interactivity, everything from videos to PDF downloads to commenting to form submissions uh, to all sorts of chat functionality, interactivity going on throughout the website. So there's just a lot that you need to track outside of just page views. And so really what GTM does is they help you track all these things I just mentioned. Everything from somebody clicking on the play button of a PDF to somebody clicking on the submit button of a form to somebody entering in something on a chat function. So that's what GTM is. So why GTM? Because it helps us track all that interactivity. So all GTM is is really allows you to really place a piece of Java code, which is just script and the script that's added to a web page to collect information. So that's really what a tag is. It's just some script that gets put on a web page in order for you to collect information like page views, clicks, etc. And they send it to third party tools. Okay, so that's what GTM does. It, it basically allows you to take all these tags that collect information and you can use them in GTM. So if you want to, for example, collect how many people, you know, enter a chat functionality and start chatting. Well, you're going to take that script and you're going to put it in GTM and GTM will then allow you to start tracking that information. So that's really what GTM is. It just allows you to put tags into a container or think of it as a toy box. You have all these toys and you want to track Well, you can put all those those toys or tags in a toy box or container. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But before we get into GTM, let's just say, you know, you're communicating with your developer and there's a new user request on your web page and you want to update the tag. Well, your developer, considering it's probably a small update to your website, is probably going to not... Um, hesitate and is going to go ahead and turn around and do it normally and so normally what happens is the developer is going to go to the website and update the tag well what if you have a few things that you want to track all those things i mentioned before from downloads to clicks to you know somebody checking out to watching a video well your webmaster your web developer is going to go well hold on a second now all these requests are going to take time i need to put them into the work queue so to speak well what happens is when they go into work queue, usually it's going to take some time. And in some cases, you as a marketer need to launch a campaign. And you want to get that tracking uh, added to the website in time for the campaign launch. So you want to go ahead and quickly turn around the tracking for that particular campaign. Let's just say you're launching a campaign and you're sending people to a landing page that has a form submission and you want to be able to track how many people click on the submit button of that form submission. Well, if you need to turn that around, your developer's like, well, I need to put that in a work queue. The timing isn't going to always work out between you and your developer is my point. And so that's where GTM comes in because there is a solution update your tags faster and that's google tag manager so when we say gtm that's what gtm stands for google tag manager it's a place for you to add tags quickly and easily so tags remember are just snippets of code that allow you to track things on your website interactively interactive actively and basically when you have gtm you can bypass the webmaster and do it quickly and easily. So that's what GTM is all about. So why GTM? Because we just identified two benefits. One, you could track all the interactivity on your website. And two, you can bypass your web developer or web master. And so that's the benefit of GTM. So the benefit, you get those tags updated very quickly via Google Tag Manager. Okay, so that's what Tag Manager is. So what we're gonna talk about today is specifically what Tag Manager is and what it does. We're gonna list some of the benefits of Tag Manager. 
We're gonna show you how it works, and then we're gonna show you how to get started with Tag Manager. Tag Manager, if you're not familiar with working with webmasters and dealing with JavaScript and tags and all this jargon is just new to you today, okay, well, don't fret, sit back. We're gonna take it slow. This is an introduction into Google Tag Manager. Again, let's start out with what is Tag Manager? So we've already introduced it to some degree because we already introduced it as a tool where you can put all your tags into a toolbox, toy box, or container, so to speak, right? And we already already mentioned that, hey, you can bypass your webmaster. So you're probably thinking, well, if, I'm, if you're not familiar with Tag Manager, how can I bypass my webmaster? Well, first of all, it's a free tool, and it's a Google tool, hence the name Google Tag Manager. And it helps you really, that's the main point, is deploy and track tags on your website, bypassing your webmaster. So that's Tag Manager. And so examples of tags that can be deployed via Google Tag Manager are numerous. These are just some examples like Google Analytics, Facebook's pixel tracking, or Google Ads. There's no limit into the number of tags you can track in Tag Manager. There is no limit. You can add any number of tracking tags in Tag Manager. Okay, so some of the benefits, well again, I we just listed two. You can put any tag into Tag Manager and track that onto your website. And we know you can bypass your web developer or webmaster. And what it also does is it also allows you to test and deploy your JavaScript codes quicker. So remember, these JavaScript codes or snippets of codes are just there to track certain things on your website, whether that be a page view or somebody clicking on a play button or tracking somebody who converts or even just goes to your website. So the biggest benefit is you can take that snippet of code, let's just say Facebook. Let's just say you're doing Facebook marketing and you wanna put that Facebook pixel on your website so that you could track people who come from Facebook and convert. Well, you don't need to put that Facebook pixel on your website. You can go right to Tag Manager and you can put that snippet of code right in Tag Manager really quickly. And the other benefit here is all tags are managed in one place. And that's that to me is really a good benefit because when you start adding tags on your website and you have some tags in Tag Manager, it just gets very confusing. So ideally, all the tracking code you have on your website needs to be in Tag Manager. Think about that, all the tracking. So if you're doing Bing, or you're doing Facebook, or you're doing Twitter, or you're doing LinkedIn, and you're doing Google, you're doing all this type of marketing on all these different platforms, you're gonna have tracking code for all these different platforms. And instead of putting all that code on your website, return gonna slow down the slow, low time of your web page and website. You wanna put them all in Tag Manager so they can be organized, and you know exactly what you're trying to track. And the other great benefit of Tag Manager is is there's a versioning control. So let's just say you have added tags to your website via GTM for the last six months. Well, and let's just say you add another tag yesterday. If you added that tag yesterday and something doesn't work, well, you can just roll back to a previous version. It's that simple. So you have versioning and that's that's a good thing. When you have versioning, you can control what gets published and if something doesn't work after it gets published, then you can roll back to a previous version. So it's a, a peace of mind, so to speak. Just because you've added code to your site, there's no guarantee it's gonna work. And so you can always control what version you're dealing with in Tag Manager. And We'll talk a little bit more about that. So the biggest benefit here to me with Tag Manager is you have event tracking. And so we talked about some of the things you could track on your website from videos, from play buttons to somebody clicking on the stop on the video or pausing it all the way to somebody again chatting or let's just say somebody clicking on that purchase button on your website. Okay, and you wanna track all these different things, these different interactivities and buttons. Well, event tracking is what you're going to use to track all those buttons. And to me, this is the biggest benefit of Tag Manager. And I'll show you some examples as we go along. And if we didn't mention it already, I'll mention it again, it is free. Tag Manager is free, there's no limit. So once you have Tag Manager going, you can add as many tracking codes as you want. There's no limit on the number of tracking codes you can add to Tag Manager, okay? So it's free and you can use it to its fullest advantage. Okay, so it's also high security, meaning that it has different levels of permissions. Okay, so you can have uh, somebody just go in and look 
at the different tags and tracking codes you have in GTM. Or you can ask somebody who is very familiar with Tag Manager and can go in and add the tracking code to Tag Manager and then publish that tracking code when it gets added. So those are all the benefits. Let's talk about how it works now, specifically how does Tag Manager work? Because you're like, Rob, okay, again, a lot of jargon. You know, you, you got tags and JavaScript and, and versioning and publishing and all this other stuff. Well, I know I'm throwing a lot at you at once, but just bear with me here. Okay, so let's start talking about how it actually works. So you have a website, okay? Whatever that domain is, you have a website and there's chances are on your website, you have some form of interactivity, whether that be a video, whether that be a blog, whether it be a form submission. You have a website with some interactivity. And let's just say you're even thinking about getting ready to launch some type of campaign on maybe Google or Facebook and you want to drive traffic to your website. Fair enough. You're joining the millions of other websites that are out there that have interactivity that also drive traffic to the website. So in comes Google Tag Manager. And so Tag Manager is important because again, we know we want to track people coming from that Facebook campaign or that Google campaign and interacting with our site. So if you are running Facebook and you are running Google Analytics, well, guess what? You want to put that tracking code in Tag Manager. So Google Analytics being a Google product works very nicely with Tag Manager. Facebook has its own tracking code, but you still want to be able to track people who come from the Facebook campaign to your website. So you're going to get that tracking code from Facebook and put it in Tag Manager. That's generally how it works. So here information from your website is shared with another data source through Tag Manager. So think about that. If I add Facebook tracking code to Tag Manager, or let's just say I add Google Analytics tracking code to Tag Manager, Tag Manager is the one that's pushing out and doing all the heavy lifting. They're the ones that are controlling what code gets fired and what code doesn't. So if you're putting the code in Tag Manager, Tag Manager is controlling the code. Think about it that way. And let's show you an example of what that looks like. So here I am, I'm in Tag Manager. I just went to tagmanager.google.com and here I could see a list of tags. So in our conversation, we're talking about tracking Facebook and we're talking about tracking Google Analytics. Well, Google Analytics is easy because it's a Google product. So here, if I look at all the different tracking code I have on my website through Tag Manager, let's just take a look at Google Analytics. So if you're going to use Tag Manager, you might as well put the Google Analytics code in here. So here I can see I have Google Analytics as a tag in Tag Manager. Now, for Facebook, if I'm running a Facebook campaign, well, I can take that pixel tracking and put it in GTM as well. And here I could see Facebook pixel. That is, that code is added to GTM. I just basically took what Facebook gave me and put it into Google Tag Manager. So you could see I can add Facebook and Google Analytics. And again, I can't stress it enough, any tracking code from any platform, I can add to Google Tag Manager in order to track the behavior from those sources. So let's take a little bit deeper dive into how Tag Manager works. So I just showed you an example of how you could take Facebook and Google Analytics code and put it into Tag Manager. But if you're not familiar with Tag Manager, then how do I do that? Well, let's talk about the structure and how Tag Manager works. So when you have a Tag Manager account, you have a container, remember? I mentioned toy box earlier. You have a bunch of toys if they're, they're code and you're tracking different bits of code from different platforms like Facebook. Think of those as toys and you have a toy box. Okay, well that's what this code is and that's what a container is. The code is the code and that's gonna go into the toy box or container. And so the way Tag Manager works is you have tags, triggers, and variables. So if I take my Facebook tracking code and put it into a container, I need to set up a tag and a trigger. Okay, so let's take a look at what that is. So first, if I go back to Tag Manager, I'm gonna have an account and if I have an account, I'm going to have a container. So here I'm just gonna click on an account with a container and a container is nothing more than what website you're adding the tracking code to. Okay, that's all the container is. We're just letting Tag Manager know this is the website we're adding all this code to. So 
you have tags, triggers, and variables. That's the structure of Tag Manager. So tags are just what it says, tags. What are we trying to quote unquote tag? Well, if it's Google Analytics, that's easy. Here I could see I have Google Analytics added. So if I click on Google Analytics, here's my tag. And if I take a little bit of a deeper dive there, since Google Analytics is a Google product. It integrates already with Tag Managers. It's pretty easy. I can just choose Google Analytics. Then I'm going to check Page View, and that's my tag. Now, every tag needs a trigger. Okay, so I need to tell Tag Manager how or when to fire the Google Analytics tracking code. So in this case, I'm going to tell Tag Manager to fire on all pages. So if I get somebody, a visitor to my website, Analytics is firing on all pages. So whatever page that visitor lands on, Google Analytics is gonna fire. So that's really what it comes down to is I have a tag and I need to tell Tag Manager when to trigger that tag. That's really what the structure of Tag Manager is. It's tags, triggers, and variables. And variables, what we're gonna talk about here in a couple minutes. But you have a piece of code, you're gonna go ahead and put that into Tag Manager, you're gonna tag it, and then you're going to fire that trigger. So let's take a look at another example here. If I go back here, you can see Facebook. Well, here's my Facebook pixel, okay? That's my tag. So when is it going to fire? Well, it's going to fire on a specific domain or subdomain. That's basically what we're doing. We're trying to tell GTM when to fire that particular tag. So those are the three main components, a tag, okay, which is going to contain the JavaScript code that you get from say Facebook, the trigger. So you're going to go into Tag Manager and tell Tag Manager when to fire that code, that's the trigger, and then you have variables. And so variables are basically just additional information that Tag Manager may need for your tag and trigger to work. So that's what a variable is. It's there to get the tag and trigger to fire. So variables are divided into built-in and user-defined variables. So common user variables include say page path or page URL or host name or click class again they're there and these examples I just gave you are there to get your tag and trigger to work think about it that way they're just that's a component and if I go into tag manager here and here on the left side I can see variables so remember I have built-in and user defined so built-in means that tag manager already built these for me so in case I need to get my trigger to work with my tag I can use a variable so those are built in and then I have user defined. So these are what I define. These are what I created. And again, the variables are there to get the tag and trigger to work. Okay, so that's the job of the variable. The job of the tag is to host that JavaScript code. Okay, in the case of Facebook or analytics, that's where we're putting our code. So here, if I click on AdWords remarketing, again, it's a Google product, so I don't really need to even deal with code. I'm just gonna select Google AdWords remarketing. Okay, so you could see GTM integrates nicely with some of the other Google products. But let's just say you have a Facebook pixel tracking code, you're gonna choose custom and you're gonna put the code here. So that's part of the tag. And then the trigger again is there to get the tag to fire. So you're telling GTM when to fire the tag and the variable is there to help you make sure that that trigger and that tag work together. So that's how all three kind of work together. You need the tag to put the code. You need the trigger to tell GTM when to fire the tag and code and the variables there to help you define when that tag and trigger should work or how it should work. So again, review tags are they're just small codes of JavaScript or tracking pixels on your website. And so tags are allowed to manage events like scroll tracking, remarketing, clicks, downloads, files, play buttons, you name it, even clicks on external links. For example, let's just say you have a click on uh, or a Facebook uh, icon on your site, and when somebody clicks on it, they go to Facebook, you wanna maybe track that, you're gonna create a tag. Okay? The trigger is there because you need to tell GTM when to fire that tag. So it's a certain condition, whether it's you know fire the tag if the URL equals facebook.com or some other condition. So the tag 
cannot be created until the creation of the corresponding trigger. So tags and triggers go together. You can't just create a tag and not have a trigger. Otherwise, your tag will never fire. And then the variable is there again. It stores the information when defining a trigger or transferring data to tag. So a variable has a variety of data, okay? So you pick and choose the variable you want to use with that trigger, okay? So you're making sure that by defining a variable, you're making sure that you're telling GTM how that trigger should be fired. So let's take a look at another example here of how all three play together. If I'm in this account, I'm in this container. If I look down here, I could see Google Optimize. That's another Google product. So what I'm doing here is I just chose Google Optimize as my tag. It's already integrated. So what does that mean? I don't even need to deal with any code. I'm just gonna select optimize. Well, we have the tag Google Optimize, but we need to tell GTM how to fire that. And so here we're going to tell GTM to fire it on all pages. So that's basically a very simple example because we're firing it on all pages. So if I wanna look at something specific again, Facebook, Here's my tag, here's my code. What's my trigger? Well, my trigger is it's gonna fire on specific pages. How do I know that? Well, if I look at the trigger, here I could see the trigger is a page view, but I'm telling it to fire on this particular host name. So the tag and trigger go hand in hand. <music>
then you are free to start using Tag Manager. And that means you're free to start adding tags. Okay, so if you wanna know more information about installing Google Tag Manager, then what I would recommend is visit the Quick Start Guide website of GTM. So again, if you're curious as to where that code is located in Google Tag Manager, well, when you create an account and you create a container, that container is gonna have a specific ID. So if I click on that specific ID, here's where I can get my code, okay? So again, when I'm logged in to Tag Manager, I'm gonna click on Workspace, but in the top navigation, I'm gonna see my unique GTM ID. If I click on that, that's where my code is gonna be located. And so again, your code needs to go in the header, and there's another script that needs to go in the body. And if you're not sure how to add the code to your website, well, you can always click on the quick start guide here, okay? And that'll take you to a quick start guide page, a reference page related to Google Tag Manager. So let's talk about creating a tag. So once you get Tag Manager installed, I'm sure you're excited to get going and create that first tag. So let's talk about how to create a tag in Tag Manager. So when you're in Tag Manager, all you need to do is basically you're looking at all your tags. If you click on tag in the left side navigation, you'll see all your tags and there's a new button there. So you just click new. And so basically what you're gonna do is you're going to create your first tag. And so what I would recommend once you get Tag Manager installed on your website, I would recommend setting the first tag up as Google Analytics. So that will get you going with tracking page views on your website when, some, when somebody visits your website, okay? So ideally, that's what you wanna do. You wanna get Google Analytics as your first tag in Tag Manager. So what I'm gonna do is because Analytics is a Google product, it's already integrated nicely with Tag Manager. So I'm just gonna click on Google Analytics. It's going to be a page view, that's what I'm tracking. And now I have to set up a variable. And so what it's going to do, it's gonna ask me to set a, select a variable. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna select new variable. And what you're going to do is you're actually gonna go and add your tracking ID here. That's gonna be your variable. So where do I get my tracking ID in analytics? Well, if I'm in analytics, I'm gonna to go to admin. And then under property settings, I'm gonna see my tracking ID. And all you need to do then is go to tag manager and paste copy. First, you gotta copy over that tracking ID. Then you're gonna go to tag manager and paste it. And then that's gonna create a variable for you. And then when you create that variable, you're gonna see it in the drop down here. So I've already created it. And basically, that's your tag with a variable. Then what are you gonna do? You're gonna set up a trigger. So see, I have some triggers already set up. You're gonna see a default trigger already set up for you and that's gonna be all pages. So ideally what you wanna do is you wanna select all pages in order for analytics to fire on all pages. So that's what we're doing. We're setting up a trigger. We're basically telling Tag Manager, hey, if I get a visitor to any page on my website, then I want you to fire Google Analytics. So that's basically, in summary, how to set up your first tag. And my recommendation is your first tag should be Google Analytics. And when you set up analytics, you're gonna have to set up a variable for the tracking ID. And so you get the tracking ID again from admin, property settings, copy and paste that tracking ID over, save it, you have your variable, that variable is gonna be included in with the tag, then your trigger is gonna be all pages. And there you go, you have your first tag, you have your first variable, you have your first trigger. So that's basically what you wanna do. And once you've added that tag, once you've added that trigger, then the only thing you need to do now is basically publish the tag. And so anytime you save a tag, you're going to go ahead and submit it so that way it gets published. So again, what you're gonna do is let's take a step back here. You're going to choose new tag. You're gonna choose analytics from the drop down menu. You're gonna choose page view. Then basically you're going to add your tracking ID so you could set up the variable. And then basically that's what you need to do. Okay, you're gonna add that tracking ID and then voila, that's your tag with a variable. And then once you've done that, then you're going to click submit. So when you click submit, 
you're basically saying, hey, I want this tag to go live now, this tag and trigger. And once you've done that, then analytics is ready to go. And anytime somebody goes to your website on any page, Tag Manager is gonna fire Google Analytics. So the great thing here is you have something called Google Tag Assistant, and that's a, an extension that works with Chrome. And so when you've actually added Tag Manager to your site, or you have analytics running in Tag Manager, you can confirm if those tags are firing properly. So let's take a look at how Google Tag Assistant works. Okay, so if you just do a search for Google Tag Assistant, you're gonna see here that it's basically just an extension that works in Chrome, and it unfortunately only works in Chrome browser. It doesn't work in any other browser. So go ahead and install that extension into Chrome. And when you do that, you're gonna see this nice icon here in your browser. And now, if you go to any website and I click on Google Tag Assistant, and I click on enable, okay? So basically I'm loading Google Tag Assistant. And now once I refresh the page, I can see that this particular site has Google Tag Manager installed. And not only does it have Tag Manager installed, I can see that it's also has Google Analytics running. I have also Google Optimize running and I have Google Ads Remarketing Tag running in Tag Manager. So that's what Tag Assistant does. It allows you to see if one tag manager is on the site and if it is great what other tags are firing on this particular site so tag assistants telling me i have these particular tags firing on that site and they're firing within tag manager so tag assistant is a great way to confirm if one tag manager is on the site and two what other tags are firing on the site now Another way you could confirm if Tag Manager is firing on the site is you can go into preview mode. So even before you submit and publish your tag and trigger, you can click on the preview mode. So if I click preview in Tag Manager, so basically that's going to put me in preview mode. And so what does that mean? Well, that means that now I'm free to go to my website and see if those tags are firing. And so let's take a look at what that looks like. So if I go to the website and just click refresh, then what's gonna happen is Tag Manager is gonna load in preview mode, just as you see here. Okay, so that's gonna take a second, couple seconds to load up. And now what can I see in preview mode? I could see that I have GTM firing, but I also have some other tags firing on this page. Remarketing, I have Google Analytics, I have Google Optimize. I have some other tags firing as well. And so the preview mode shows me what tags are firing on any given page. And I can also see what tags did not fire. Okay, so here I have a number of tags already in GTM, but they didn't fire on this particular page. So let's just say I clicked on the donate now button. I'm still in preview mode. So I'm gonna be able to see what tags fired. Now I could see I have a couple of tags that have fired on this particular page. And then I could see what tags did not fire on this page, okay? So that's the preview mode. You can use the preview mode before you even submit a tag and trigger to see if it fires. And that's the great benefit of Tag Manager. So if you're not sure if something's going to fire or not, then you can always go into preview mode. Um, and if you are sure it's gonna fire, then you can go ahead and submit it. So you can leave preview mode and just go ahead and submit that particular tag and trigger. So here I'm gonna leave preview mode. And now once I'm done, and I'm sure the tag is gonna fire and go ahead and submit all my changes that I've worked on in terms of setting up tags and triggers. So that's really GTM in a nutshell. So I have my tags, okay, my tags are just snippets of code that I'm going to put in, whether that be Facebook or vet tracking or any other Google product like Optimize or PageView. Then I have my triggers. My triggers are there to tell GTM when to fire that tag. And the variables are there to help those tags and triggers work together. So remember that particular variable we set up for Google Analytics, okay, so here it is right here because we wanna tell GTM what property to specifically fire in Google Analytics. So that's why we set up that variable. But there are all sorts of variables. Google Tag Manager has built in or variables already created for you. Or you can 
specifically to find a variable. So variables are there to help the tags and triggers work together. So when you set up a tag, you set up a trigger, you use a variable, you can always go into preview mode, preview it by going to the website, seeing if it fires. If it fires, then voila, you can go ahead and click submit and that will publish the tag and trigger and you're good to go. That's pretty much how Tag Manager works. And again, I can't stress that there is an unlimited number of tags you can add to Tag Manager. There's no limit. So you got everything from anything from Google to non-Google to event tracking, okay? To Facebook, to anything that you wanna track, you wanna be able to put into Tag Manager. And again, there's versioning. That's one of the great benefits of Tag Manager. So if I wanna go back to an older version, I can simply do that. So here you can see I'm on version 32. That's how Tag Manager works. And I can't stress that, you know, Tag Manager is there to help you track interactivity on the site. Because if you have a site that's interactive, that has a video, that has a download button, let's just say, you know, you have all sorts of newsletter signups, Facebook, YouTube buttons on your website, just like this website does, and you wanna be able to track how many people click on that particular button, well, you're gonna need Tag Manager. And when you have Tag Manager, you're gonna be able to track all of these button clicks and interactivity on your website. Without Tag Manager, it's gonna be hard to do that. So that's an introduction to Tag Manager. If you guys have any comments or questions, as you may, this some of you, this may be new to you, go ahead and put a comment or go ahead and add a question to the comment section right below this video, and we'll be sure to answer it. And so stay tuned, we're gonna have more webinars on Tag Manager as we move along. So thank you again for joining. If you need more information, please visit simplylearn.com or again, add a comment or question to the comment section below this video. Thank you again, and I'll see you soon. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.